Hello, so in the last video we were talking about these things called ordinary points, okay? And we also introduced the idea, whilst we're at it, of introducing the idea of singular points. Now in the last video we talked about how to solve an equation that look, looks like this, that looks like this. So basically, you know, when we had um, varying coefficients here, or varying, yeah, varying coefficients in front of it, so it might be a function. Uh, for example, rather than just a constant case. When we've looked at the constant case, if you remember, we looked at the constant case, we looked at kind of methods of how to solve it when these when these functions here or these or these coefficients here were constants, so just numbers. Okay, and that was kind of fairly straightforward. And then if you remember, we introduced this idea of power series. And the reason why we introduced the idea of power series is because then we could actually solve a whole new range of differential equations. Okay. Um, so yeah, when these when these when these coefficients here are, co are are variables, so in other words they change, then in other words we need to use the idea behind power series um, in order to try and solve them. And you see, the nice thing about differential equations, or some might say the not very nice thing about differential equations, is kind of like there's no one answer. Okay, it's based very much on feel, feel for these equations, and it comes to experience and familiarising yourself with differential equations. And I mean, you know, we introduce this whole idea behind power series. You know, we look for, we look at this whole kind of idea behind power series and look for solutions based on this power series to try and get some more solutions out. Okay, um, but I mean, what you will find is that. There's no kind of right or wrong way with differential equations sometimes. Sometimes there is, but a lot of the time, but sometimes there isn't. Because there's so many solutions out there. But so in order to just get a few, um, you know, because sometimes at best we can only just take a handful at a time. We can't take the whole lot. We, we can't access the whole lot. So we have to kind of develop methods of how to deal with them. And what you'll often find is that actually sometimes, um, you know, like, well, like we introduce new theory, we introduce the idea behind power series to, act, to sort of access these types of equations. But there are some equations out there which can't be solved um, using any kind of general theory. It's based very much on guesswork and on kind of feel and familiarity. So you're not just fumbling around in the dark. You have at least got some idea or at least some idea of what to try. OK, and this is why I say a lot of the time we're just guessing solutions. Uh, in actual fact, we don't even, you know, the whole class of differential equations that we don't look at in this course. We only look at ordinary types of differential equations. So, you know, where we have a definite derivative, so like dy over dx or something like this. But we don't even look at the type where there's partial differential equations. OK, um, and in actual fact, when you look here, you know, there's there's some partial differential equations where there is theory. And there's things like Storm Louisville theory and stuff like that, um, which, again, we don't look at in this course to solve partial differential equations but there's some partial differential equations where no theory exists whatsoever and it is based purely on feel purely on feel so anyway that's kind of a little while you know and and basically if you can come up with some general way of solving an OD, uh, solving a differential equation like you know there is literally just this is the method which you have to use to solve any differential equation you will quite literally become probably uh, a billionaire if not a trillionaire you'll become majorly rich overnight because differential equations are so applicable um, to the everyday world all right and the and sort of you know because differential equations quite literally describe everything which goes on around us you know which is why and they're so useful um, so you know if you can come up with a way of solving them overnight you will quite literally become majorly rich overnight so in the last video, we kind of looked at this, we looked at this and we defined some some ratios. Um, and basically the idea is that we want to make this this first, this, you know, this the second derivative here. So the first the first um, term, uh, the first coefficient here, we want to make it monic. And monic, remember, is just where this P of X is one. And the way which we do that is dividing through by P of X. So in other words, when we divide through by P of X, divide the whole thing through by P of X. So divide the whole thing through by P of X. OK. And of course, this becomes p over x as well. So 0 over p of x is still 0. OK, p of x over p of x is still 1. So therefore, we've got a monic equation. And if you remember, I just defined this ratio here. So in other words, q over p. Let's call it something. Let's call it a. OK, uh, and let's call this ratio here. So r over p. Let's call it r over p. Let's call it something. Let's just call it b. OK, so in other words, then we can just simplify this thing down even further to just being some 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 function there a of x and some function here let's call it b of x okay and uh, basically the idea is that you know if we look at these two if we look at these two ratios here providing p is not zero then we've got an ordinary point but if p is zero so in other words we put a we put a we, when we put a point in to p because of course this is dependent on x 
dependent on x, they're all dependent on x, okay? When we put a function in, uh, when we put a value in, sorry, not a function, when we put a value in for p, uh, if it goes to zero, if it doesn't go to zero, uh, then it's an ordinary point. So if p of x naught is not zero, then it's an ordinary point. Okay, so x naught is an ordinary point. But if p of x naught is equal to zero, then it's what's known as a singular point. It's what's known as a singular point. And if you remember, we was very careful about how I defined q, p, and r, or p, q, and r, um, uh, in the sense that they share no common factors. Because if that's, that's, the, if that's the case, um, then obviously q can't be zero or r can't be zero because they share no common factors. You know, you can't break them down into elements of the other. Uh, so that's basically the idea behind an ordinary and singular point. Now, in the last video, we looked at how to solve something like this, um, where we had ordinary points. OK, but now what we're going to do here is just sort of introduce the idea. And it's going to be quite wordy. You know, it's going to be me talking a lot um, of, of introducing the idea when it is a singular point, or at least trying to kind of introduce how we can go about tackling um, something of this form around a singular point. So at the moment, we can solve a differential equation around any ordinary point and we use it do it using power series solutions. Um, but if we're around a singular point, at the moment we've got no idea about how to solve that. So in this video, we're gonna try and sort of start to introduce the ideas that we're going to need. So first things first, I'm just gonna start introducing some new kind of equations. If you remember, you know, as we travel through differential equations, we've already met, uh, for example, Euler equations, and we've met uh, Bernoulli equations. You know, as we move through differential equations, we start coming across some equations that have already been looked at before because they possess some interesting quality for example and you know and some people may have already looked at them in the past and uh you know and so they've already looked at how to solve them so when we see an example of of, of a differential equation of a particular form we say all oh, right that's that's Euler equation all oh, right that's that's Bernoulli equation I know a little trick or I know I know that what kind of thing I have to do to try and solve these types of equations okay so I'm going to introduce a new more uh, uh, sort of a couple more of these types of equations now and this one's known as a Bessel equation and it goes like this so we've got x squared times the second derivative plus x times the first derivative. Now already you should be looking at this and thinking, hmm, that looks a little bit like um, like Euler equation because it's starting to look like a quadratic, which is hidden within a differential equation. Um, but the thing which separates this from a from a um, quad, uh, from an Euler equation is this last bit here. So it's x squared minus v squared. And you think, all oh, right, okay, that's you know, if it was an Euler equation, that bit there would just be constant. Uh, but because it's not. Uh, then it's, uh, that's times by y, by the way, then it's, it, this is what's known as a, as a Bessel equation. Okay. Now, I'm not interested in sort of how to solve these. Uh, I'm not going to introduce that at the moment. I mean, by all means, go away and find out about them if necessary. Um, but I'm just interested in sort of trying to spot where the, where the uh, singular point is, okay, or whether it's an ordinary point or a singular point. Well, let's have a look first of all. Okay, the, the thing which is going to tell us what type of point it is is going to be the coefficient in front of the second derivative. So in other words, the x squared. So, I mean, I've written this up here just as a reminder. So, you know, the thing which is going to tell us what type of point it is, is what the, uh, what the, f what the first coefficient is, or what the coefficient in front of the second derivative is. In this case, it's x squared. Okay. And then what you've got to ask yourself is there's going to be a singular point. There's going to be a singular point when this is equal to zero. So what value of x do I have to plug in here in order to make, this, in order to make it equal to zero? Okay. And the answer is going to be zero. Yeah, so when x equals 0, then uh, p of x equals 0. But at every other point, are you happy that at every other point, so any other x value I put in, it will not be 0? And that's kind of fairly obvious because if I just draw my function x squared out, okay, the only point where it's going to be 0 is here. You know, all other points is going to be positive. So it's going to be non-zero. Okay? So in other words, my singular point, my singular point is going to be, my singular point is going to be at x equals zero for my Bessel equation, okay? So the next type of, uh, of differential equation I want to introduce is quite a famous one, actually. It comes up a lot in physics, and it's something called the Le, Le Legendre equation. Uh, the Legendre equation, that looks like a D. Uh, sorry, no, it's actually meant to be a D. Okay, it's the Le, Legendre uh, equation, and it goes like this. Okay, so we've got one minus, one minus x squared, times the second derivative, okay, minus 2x times the first derivative, plus, and then some constant alpha times alpha minus, alpha plus 1, okay, times y, and that's going to be equal to 0. So again, another 
homogeneous equation. Okay, where's the singular point going to be? Well, again, we have to look at this first coefficient here. The other coefficients we're not really worried about to tell whether it's a singular or ordinary point. This is the thing which we're worried about. Okay, so in other words, here p of x is one minus x squared. Okay, and we want to see where that is equal to zero. Well, fairly obviously, if we just do a little bit of rearranging, we're going to see that there's going to be a singular point at plus or minus one. Okay, so plus or minus one, that is where our singular point is going to be. Okay, so at all other points, by the way, yeah, at all other points, just another quadratic uh, here, um, at all other points, it's not going to be zero because it's a quadratic, so it's only going to be zero at plus or minus one. Okay, so here's where my singular point is going to be at plus or minus one. OK, so, you know, that that's kind of just an introduction into how to find singular points and ordinary points. Now, in the last video, we looked at how to solve this kind of differential equation around ordinary points. And if you remember, it involved trying to plug in a solution that looked like this and it involved a power series solution. So this is where our power series um, kind of uh, theory kind of came in. You know, this is why power series is actually useful. This is why we're looking at it in the first place. And it's basically looking like this. OK, so this is the solution which we try. This is the solution which we try and we plug it in. Uh, you know, again, we find the first derivative. We differentiate this and we find the second derivative. Um, and basically, we just plug it in and that's how we solve it for near ordinary points. But actually, you can try this. You can try this with both the Legendre and the Bessel equation and see if that method will work. And you'll actually find very quickly uh, that it won't. It will end up failing. OK, or at least it'll become very, very difficult, uh, which is a pretty good indication that it probably won't work. OK, so therefore we need to come up with a new method. Um, and so what we're going to do, what we're going to do is actually quite nice. We're going to use this method, um, but we're going to kind of, yeah, we're going to basically use this method, but we're going to be very sneaky in how we use it. Uh, uh, by the way, by the way, why, why should um, th this method that we looked at with for ordinary points, why should this method break down? when we're looking at singular points? Well, the answer is that if x0 is a singular point, if x0 is a singular point, then when we try and find the Taylor series approximation of it, okay, remember that for the Taylor series, we need f of x0 and the derivatives, x0 and the you know, second derivative, and so on and so on and so on. Um, you know, if, if, the, if, the, if this goes to, to, if this basically makes it go off to, uh, if it's not defined, if x0 is not defined uh, for that function, then basically that's gonna go away. So effectively, it's just going to end up with the Taylor series where the right hand side isn't defined. So we're not going to be able to use the defect Taylor series. OK, hopefully you can kind of see what we need. So therefore, we need a kind of more general expansion. And in fact, what we're going to look at, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the behavior close to these singular points. So at the moment, I'm just kind of considering X naught as a singular point. OK, um, and we need to look at the behavior, what's happening near these singular points. And what we quite often find is that solutions will often become unbounded or they'll rapidly change in time, in size. So for example, if we've got a function that looks something like this, okay, so we come like that and then we suddenly go down there. And say if there's a singular point there, what we'll quite often find, there'll be a massive jump that will go off to say infinity, for example. So there might be an asymptote at that point or something like that. Um, you know, I mean, it can kind of rapidly change in size or whatever. And kind of when you're looking at this in a geometric kind of application, what we quite often find is this will correspond to a corner or a sharp edge um, in, in kind of uh, in, in a solution. OK, and this corresponds to a singular point. OK, so basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to look and see what, um, well, what our ratios are doing at that particular point. It's all basically rate based around the ratios because, of course, P is how we find uh, the singular points. You know, this is how we define what a singular point is. So effectively, what we've got to do is look and see at what these singular points are doing at those particular points. So, for example, we might have, um, we, we'll have two solutions, Y1 and Y2. You know, they might be both, uh, they might be both bounded, okay, which is good. It's good if they're both bounded. So in other words, they remain within a, within, remain within a finite range. OK, um, or we might have that Y2, for example, shoots off to infinity uh, whilst Y2 be, remains bounded. Or we might have the case where they both shoot off to infinity. OK, so this is basically what I mean when I'm trying to say, well, look, this is what I'm trying to see what happens with the with the solutions. OK, and I'm going to take you through kind of each case. This is just kind of a very general introduction video. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to see, you know, based on these ratios, based on these ratios, we're trying to see what Y1 and Y2 is doing. OK, because if Y1 kind of if, if they kind of remain bounded or if they do some sort of nice things, then basically we can we can try and um, we can try and solve them. We can try and sort of alter the method in which we solve them. So, OK, 
Okay, so where do we start then? Where do we start? I mean, there's lots of questions, okay? Um, and what we're gonna do over the next few videos is kind of aim to answer these questions. So this is just, like I say, just an introduction to the types of problems that are being faced and why we're doing what we're doing over the next few videos, okay? I always think it's nice to put things back into context. So where do we start? Well, the thing is, like most things in ODEs, it's, it's kind of, it's, um, it, it's a very creative subject, but, we quite often got methods that we can already use. For example, we've already got the method for ordinary points. We've already got a method which we can use um, uh, to solve a differential equation close to an ordinary point. So the idea is then, the idea is that we can build on this method. You know, as you'll quite often find in ODs, as if you haven't already noticed, what you'll quite often find is that we've got a method that works for a particular type of situation, but it breaks down for another type of situation. So what we have to do is for that situation where it breaks down, so for example, for singular points, for singular points, um, this method doesn't work. So for singular points, this method doesn't work. So what we have to do is we kind of have to use this method as inspiration and tweak it and alter it and kind of uh, make it work effectively. And that might seem like a quite a brute force method, but trust me, it's kind of, this is one of the, this is one of the fundamental ways of getting through ODEs. OK, um, the reason being is because it's, it's quite young in its infancy. You know, it's not been around for thousands of years. If you take something like geometry that's been around for thousands of years, it's very well practiced and very well refined. Whereas ODEs is kind of a little bit rough around the edges. And, and you know what? I kind of quite like that. It's kind of quite creative. OK, so, um, yeah, so basically the idea is, I mean, I've got distracted again. We've got a method. We've got the method for solving near ordinary points. All right. So, I mean, if you think if you think about a singular point, right, what does that actually mean? Well, let's say, for example, we've got a domain. Now, I've talked about what a domain means before. A domain is just simply a set of points that we that I suppose we just kind of fence off. OK, so this is just like a region um, that we fenced off of all of our points. So let's say we've got all of our X points that contain that we want to consider which are contained within this region. OK, but one of them is badly behaved. Let's say this point here is badly behaved. This point here is a singular point. So effectively, what we do, what we do is we look at points which are really, 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 really close to that singular point. Because, of course, at points close to that singular point, they will be ordinary. You know, we call that a neighbourhood. Points that are close to a, points that are close to um, a particular point is called a neighbourhood. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because if you think about a neighbourhood in kind of everyday language, you know, your neighbourhood is the, the houses or people that are close to you, right? So these is, it makes sense in, in you know, in this context that the neighbourhood of points are the points which are close to this singular point. Now, these neighbourhoods of points aren't singular points, because if they were, then we'd call them singular points. So the points which are close to singular points kind of behave in a very similar way to singular points. You know, they kind of, the idea is that the, the points which are close to a point, um, yeah, the points, these points in here, which are close to the point of interest, will behave in a very similar way to that particular point. So, you know, the points in here, the points in here will behave in a very, very similar way um, to the to the red point, you know, the singular point. But they won't behave exactly the same way, because if they if they did, then they'd be called singular points. But instead, those blue points, which I've just kind of shaded in there, are what are known as ordinary points still, but they behave in a very similar way to singular points. So in other words, if we can try and solve for these blue points, these points which are in a neighbourhood of points, these are ordinary, we know how to solve for those. So for, in other words, if we can solve the differential equation for these points here, then that will give us a pretty good indication of what the solution is, to, of how to solve it for the red point, for the singular point. OK, so hopefully that makes sense. Let me just say it one more time and try to say it a little bit more uh, clearly. I've kind of introduced the ideas now. So, so the idea is that we've got a singular point. OK, now the singular point is where which currently is undefined. We don't know how to solve the differential equation at this red point, at this singular point. OK, but the idea is that if we consider points that are really, really close to that singular point, yeah, they're going to behave in roughly the same way as that singular point. But they're still going to be. But we know how to solve those points because they're still going to be ordinary points. Yeah, they're not singular points in themselves. So these blue points here are not currently singular points, but they behave in a very, very similar way to that singular point. So in other words, if we can solve the differential equation for these ordinary points, so in other words, these, these blue points here, these points that are really, really close to that singular point, which we can do, then we can kind of, 
see, you, you know, we can get a pretty good idea of what's happening at that singular point. And we can find a solution for that singular point. OK, um, now, in order to do this method, we have to look for something called we have to do for, look for something called weak singularities. Now, this is basically this is basically where this singularity, this this singularity, so this red point here, OK, isn't too severe. So in other words, it doesn't go shooting off to infinity immediately. In other words, it's kind of gently easing up to infinity. So, for example, you might have a function that looks something like this. OK, and, you know, it might, for example, be gradually building, gradually building, and then kind of it gradually builds towards infinity. And then it shoots off to infinity at, say, that point there. So it's off to infinity at, say, that point there. So in other words, what we're looking for is, is types of singularities where it doesn't just do something like this. It doesn't just do something like this, or sort of like this, and then just suddenly shoots off to infinity. It kind of eases itself in gently. Um, and sort of that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. OK, so those are the types of singularities we're looking for. And those are type of types of singularities called weak singularities. Now, how do we define those? Well, these singularities, remember singularities are based on Q on P and R on P. OK, so these are the two things that our singularities are based on. You know, this is how we this is how we come about a singularity in the first place, because we've introduced this new ratio. Right. Um, so basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to try and define this idea of a weak singularity. Um, and it's going to be based fairly obviously on these two ratios here. Uh, in actual fact, I mean, it's a lot of maths, but we're not actually going to show it. But I mean, I can introduce an idea of why it might be true. Um, and the idea is that basically as we take a limit OK, of points which tend towards our singularity. So remember, all we're doing here, you know, our singularity, our singularity is x naught. So basically all we're doing here with this x goes to x naught is we're just considering points that are close to x naught. This is a neighbourhood. Yeah, this thing in here is our neighbourhood. Yeah, because it's just the points which are close to x naught. It's the points which tend towards x naught. The points which sort of get closer and closer to x naught. The points that are close to x naught are these other points which are in the neighbourhood. OK, so all I'm basically doing with this notation here is I'm saying, right, in the neighbourhood. OK, so in the neighbourhood um, and I consider two things. I consider this this ratio um, times by X minus X naught. OK, and that's kind of that kind of comes from the method of of uh, of ordinary points. Yeah, you've got this X minus X naught going on in here. Um, so you've got X minus X naught. OK, and you also look at this ratio, but to distinguish distinguish it from this ratio, OK, so again, we look at the we look at the neighbourhood. So X goes to X naught. But this time we look at um, instead of just looking at X minus X naught to kind of distinguish the two ratios, uh, we just square this one. OK, and that kind of, you know, you should be fairly familiar with that. This kind of idea from, say, something like partial fractions. Um, if you have one over X minus two squared, OK, then you can break this up to say, well, OK, it's going to be A over X minus two. OK plus b over x minus 2 all squared. OK, and the reason for that is because one of them has to be squared in order for this to be squared in the first place. But I mean, this is kind of, I'm just glossing over this really, really quickly. But yeah, essentially, this is where these two things are. So basically, if we look, if we evaluate these two things, if we evaluate these two things, by the way, these are both of x. OK, both of x. OK, and if these two things remain finite, so in other words, if, you know, this is basically what we're saying here, if these two ratios remain finite, so in other words, if we consider points that are really, really close to it, Providing these two things remain finite, then we call that thing, then we call this ratio a singularity. You know, and it's, it's kind of this process which is going on. So in other words, it's easing up. So we're considering points that are close to the singularity. So it's easing up. It's easing up to, um, it's easing up to a, um, to, to, to the singularity. It's not just kind of shooting up like this. It's not just kind of shooting up like this. So in other words, this is basically what we're saying is that basically if these two things remain finite, so they remain to have some value. Um, so in other words, we're considering this situation here, considering this situation here, then basically we call that a weak singularity. OK. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's all that's going on. And the way that actually we're going to talk about these, the way that we're going to introduce these things is going to be introducing something called the Euler equation. Now, we've met the Euler equation before. We're going to look at it in far more detail, introduce kind of the, all the ins and outs. Because the Euler equation actually behaves like most singular points. OK, so if we can kind of get the Euler's, Euler equation into our head and kind of how that works, then actually we can talk a lot um, about how it, how it works for singular points. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next.